Hello and welcome to another episode of the Top Order Podcast. Tonight we're returning to a series we really enjoyed a few years ago as we check in around the New Zealand domestic provinces to kind of just see how the squads are travelling for the upcoming season. We missed out on this one last year. The disruption of COVID kind of threw us off a bit, but there aren't many players in the domestic circuit whose cricketing journey have been disrupted more by COVID than tonight's guest. Uh, but we're delighted to have him back in the country and, and now on the show. So, Dean Foxcroft, welcome to the Top Water Podcast. Yes, Matt. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, our pleasure. Um, so, I mean, I guess let's set the scene for listeners who kind of don't know your story. March 2020, you finished a really strong season with Otago, particularly in those white ball formats. You head back to South Africa, where you're originally from. I think you were taking some exams. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Um in, in a second, but then COVID hits, and from what I can tell, basically you've just been trying to get back back to New Zealand ever since, and um, I guess without going kind of too deep into immigration law and policy and all that kind of stuff, can you kind of take us through that journey and, and how the last couple of years have been for you? Yeah, um, yeah obviously 2020 was a strange year. Um, I think it was sort of March, um, and then obviously played the final game against, I think it was the Stags, we played them in Uni Oval. And then sort of COVID was around, but nobody was quite sure what's going on with COVID. Um, and then obviously the, all the games got cancelled after that. And then um, yeah, I got a, I, I went, then I went back to South Africa to see family and friends. And but obviously the main one was to write exams um, back in South Africa. I think it was early April, um, yeah, and May. And then obviously after that, just returned back to New Zealand. And then obviously couldn't return back to New Zealand after two years. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was it was quite frustrating. Um, yeah, so I wrote my exams and then um, tried to get back into New Zealand. I think in June, and then yeah, couldn't get into the country. And then um, we sort of just let it go, and then just wait for the perfect time and to get back into New Zealand. And so, and it felt like never was a perfect time to get back into the country. Um, I think we yeah. tried like uh, three exemptions, and um, we've made contact with couple of immigration lawyers and just to see uh, where's the gap we can get into and then there was no gap so um, yeah we tried three um, exemptions and in all three fails and then obviously I think it was this year when was it I think it was June July um, New Zealand announced that all the borders were open and then we sort of okay here yeah, here's the opportunity now and then all the papers were got done and yeah I'm finally here after two well maybe 28 months which was quite long yeah, jeez, that, yeah, that that must be a relief. I mean, without being kind of too blunt, what what kind of drove you to keep coming back despite all the challenges? I mean, you you sort of like you said, you're from South Africa. You only just sort of moved over here um, a couple of years before that, I think. Yeah, what why the 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 desire to keep coming back to New Zealand? Yeah, so I've I've played club cricket in in New Zealand 2016 to like 2018. Um, and I sort of like yep. fell in love with New Zealand and I, I love the country, I um, love the people, I love the culture. Um, and then sort of I went back there and, and with the commitment that I still want to play for cricket for New Zealand. And that's probably my biggest dream to play cricket for New Zealand. That's why that's why I moved to New Zealand just to play uh, cricket for for New Zealand. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, that sort of like get me through all those tough times back in South Africa. So I still want to play for New Zealand. Um, and I've made a decision I've played cricket in South Africa and overseas. Um, um, yeah, and just to keep my my local status in New Zealand um, right, and don't want to give anything up in New Zealand cricket. So, um, but yeah, sort of for me, it was just I'd, um, I've made contact with Otago throughout the whole two years, and they've pushed me as well. Mm -hmm. Massive massive credit goes to them um, to keep like keep me positive, keep me going. Um, yeah, so um, that probably just helped me to get through all these long twenty eight months. Um, yeah, so. That was probably the main one, just to, I want to play cricket for New Zealand and, and play cricket for Otago as well. So, yeah, that was probably the main one. And, um, you know, you, you mentioned there the New Zealand, the, you know, you want to play for New Zealand. Has the, the, the that 28th month period kind of impacted the stand down period? Because, like, from memory, I think Michael Rippon had kind of a similar setback on that front. He yeah. went back to um, South Africa and kind of, I don't know, it was it seemed to be a bit vague from... Me following from the outside, I'm sure he knew what was going on, but yeah. it seemed like he kind of stayed slightly too long out of the country and it sort of set things back. Is that the same for you? Yeah, that's definitely the same for me. Um, that's why I went back to South Africa and thought it's going to be a two-month thing and because the rules is you need to be outside the country for two months and you need to be in the country for 10 months per year. Um, so that was on my mind for just going out for 
for two months and then come back to stay in the rules. And then obviously that was not the case. Um, but yeah, look, I've made contact with Cricket New Zealand and, and asked questions and see where we are with the, with the whole situation of qualifying. Um, I think it might start over. I'm not quite sure yet, but um, I think that's probably mm. the worst case, and which is fine. I'm still pretty young. Um, I'm still back in, basically back in the system now again, so I just want to find my feet and keep um, scoring runs and take wickets for Togo Volts and winning games with them, and then hopefully the other opportunities will come later on. So I don't want to look too far ahead of myself. So, yeah, I think that's probably the case. Yeah, fingers crossed. I mean, I looked, um, I sort of looked, did, did a little bit of looking back and, and um, in your South African under-19 scorecard, mainly because I saw you scored 100 against uh, New Zealand 19s. I kind of looked at that scorecard, very interesting one to check yeah. out. Rachin Ravindra, the Phillips brothers playing in that for Allen, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, Zach Gibson, I think, all on the side. Kyle Verena and Wian Mulder were in your side. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Were you always kind of planning to like sound? You know, you said you're in the New Zealand system now, kind of back in the system. What you know, it seemed like you're in the South African system at the start. Were you always planning to move away from South Africa, or, or was it just the fact that you said you moved here, played a club cricket season, and, and kind of fell in love? Yeah, it was sort of a bit of both. Um, I just felt by myself I need to go and explore some other opportunities. Um, yeah, I, I sort of what. Well, I said to my old man, I just want to go and see what New Zealand like. And we all agree with that. And then I played club cricket for Terradale in Hawke's Bay. And then, yeah, and, and worked there as well. Worked for, on, on, on bread food trucks um, just to keep the money in coming <laughs> as well. So, and then I sort of like yeah. it. And I think that was probably the main thing for me is I love New Zealand. And, and I mentioned to my dad, it's like, oh, the only thing I want to come back. I want to come back and see the family, but not to play cricket. Um, and then and he agrees as well. Um, as long as I'm happy. Um, yeah, and the thing for me is, like, I felt cricket in South Africa was um, was always, always an option for me, but then at the same time, I felt in love with New Zealand and the cricket here and, and the people. So, um, yeah, and that's probably the, the best decision I've ever made so far. So happy with that. Cool. Um, and, and look, like, we've talked a lot about, um, you know, trying to get back here, but um, what were you up to on the, on the cricketing front? I'm sure you were still playing. It looks like you had... A little stint in Oman, and um, you went and visited the PSL. I assume were you playing club cricket in South Africa as well, or were you sort of not allowed to to do that because of uh, you know trying to qualify for New Zealand still? Yeah, I've played a bit of uh, club cricket in, back in South Africa. Um, yeah, I played us in overseas just because I wasn't sure what the rules going to be in New Zealand back in New Zealand. So I've played everything mm. in South Africa just as an overseas. Um, didn't play any French franchise cricket because I think the French was over there. They didn't want to sign an overseas uh, pro cricketer, so I totally don't understand with that. And then, yeah, mm-hmm. just kept myself busy with um, club cricket there. And, and I also trained at the University of Pretoria with um, the former Black Cup cricketer, um, Kruger van Wijk. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, just trained with him in the last probably 24 months, um, stay sharp with him. Um, just sort of like he played a lot of cricket for the Black Caps and the Messi cricket in New Zealand just to read his... Um, his brain just around cricket and how how to go, how to get back into the system again, just get, just to get used to it. So um, it was quite nice to spend a lot of time with him, and then also spend a bit of time in Oman and in Pakistan um, Premier League, um, which was quite nice. Um, Learn a lot there, and yeah, it was just nice just to play alongside other blokes who played all around the world. So yeah, which, which was quite cool. Yeah. Yeah, how did you find your time in Pakistan? Because um, we we talked to um, Colin Monroe a little bit before, and he's always sort of raving about the PSL. I know when um, you know the Pakistan obviously last few years only only really um, foreign teams have started going back there. New Zealand had the aborted tour, but it seems like every nation that's kind of gone there since has really enjoyed their time there. So yeah, I'm fascinated to kind of hear what what your experience was like in the country. Yeah, it was pretty cool to be honest. Um... You sort of like hear all the stories about the past and stuff, but yeah, that never came across my mind of not going. Um, yes, uh, I never felt unsafe. Um, I think the security was awesome. Um, they looked after us very well. Um, it was also in, in the COVID time, so everyone was in a bubble, so which was quite mm. um, weird and cool at the same time. Um, like you in the same hotel as all the other players, so you learn a lot and you, and, you, and you chat always to other players, which is quite nice and just to see how they go about the business. Um, but yeah, no, it was quite nice. Just the security was quite hectic. Um, a lot of police cars yeah. and guns around you, which is, um, which, yeah, which is quite cool. But 
at the same time, never felt um, unsafe. And yeah, the people over there and the crowds and yeah, the cricket level was quite nice. So um, it's a lot different, but I'm what I'm used to. But um, but yeah, it was quite a good experience. Nice. And um, how did that gig come about? And I guess sort of on that sort of how how is the Super Smash viewed as kind of a shop window for other leagues? I mean, one of our listeners kind of suggested we ask the domestic players about kind of a, a hypothetical scenario where they've been picked for a big money tournament kind of over representing their country. I don't want to put you on the spot too much because, nah. you know, like, you know, you've only just sort of started your your journey, but I, I'm sort of interested more in how, you know, the super smash is kind of viewed because we're seeing so many different leagues pop up around the world. And um, I think in general, I would say, at least in my head, people don't take too much notice of the Super Smash, but obviously you had a, you know, a good run here, and, and that, I, I'm guessing, kind of leapfrogged you into having a couple of op- opportunities overseas. Yeah, I was quite surprised I got picked by the by the PSL, but um, to be honest with you, I think the Super Smash got, um, got um, way better over the years, and I think and that goes with uh, Kirk New Zealand doing quite well, um, with well, the Blackers doing well. Um, hmm. all over the world as well. The people start watching the watching the cricket from New Zealand point of view. Um, I think I was back in South Africa last year as well and I was watching the Super Smash on TV there, which is quite nice, which I never had before oh, yeah. in a couple of years ago. But now I think all, this, all the games are getting televised all, all over the world, which is quite quite good for the players' point of view. I think everyone's getting that attention. Hmm. It's like, okay, how, how are we going on about our business over here? Um, yeah, and I think I think that's the league's going to happen. Well, with all these leagues happening around the world now, I think sort of the domestic players and getting getting a sense of we got a chance of playing a tournament maybe because I reckon it's just taking one person to have a look at you and then they like you and they can go for you in the auction, which is quite which is quite um, awesome for all the players out there. So I think with the black caps and the domestic structure in New Zealand cricket, um, I think doing so well. I think that's that's going. It's getting popular over the world now that people want to see us play now and, and see what our players doing. So I think that's probably the main thing. It's like New Zealand cricket doing well. Yeah, awesome. Long long may that continue. Yeah. Um, and, and look, um, you know, we should probably start talking about Otago and, and the upcoming season now, which starts, I think, in less than a week as, as we're recording this on, on the 12th of October. How's the pre-season been for you guys? A bit of snow last, in the last little while kind of been... Ideal, but have you guys managed to actually get outdoors and get a few games in? Yeah, um, yeah, we've, we've we've got a nice marquee facility over here, and which is training under under the glass, the glass house, um, but which is quite <laughs> nice. I think a lot, uh, Tiger Vaults put a lot of effort and time and money into a good preseason preseason for us. Um, we went to Alexandra on Monday for a nice uh, one day trip just to play a bit of cricket outside, and then we also went to back to Alex. Last week for a nice three-day, four-day um, inter-squad game, so it was nice just to get outside, mm. play a bit of game against each other, um, get a preparation going. But um, yeah, I think the preseason were pretty good. Um, we're looking forward to the season now, and we I think we're playing against Auckland in a week's time. Um, and we're, I think the boys are first and can't wait to get out there and and hopefully after a good preseason we can have a couple of good um, results going our way. Yeah, nice. And and look, a, f- a few new faces in the contract list since you were last in Otago. How's how's it kind of been transitioning back? A bit of hi, I'm Dean, kind of walking around the, the in the door the first day. Yeah, that no, was quite nice. Uh, yeah, a couple of new faces, which is quite nice. Um, yeah, we sort of missed Broomy and Nick Kelly and Andrew Kitchen, um, mm. but at the same time, we got a lot of young new faces in. Um, yeah, which is I think very good for Tiger Vault in the coming future. Um, I think if if we if we do well this year, I think it's quite good for us just to get our name out there and for all the young guys getting game time and sort of getting that experience in playing at the higher level um, and getting used to the to the first class and four trophy level um, in a Super Smash, which is quite good. Um, but I think a lot of boys who got a new contract played before as well, so they're not too new to the system. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but yeah, look, I th- look they they're a special talent, and I think they can do wonders for for us this season. And um, and look like we like to kind of get a sense of what goes on in the squads, sort of outside the on-field performances and and highlights that we catch on the NZC website. So hopefully you'll kind of indulge me with a few sort of general questions here. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, we asked some similar questions last time we did this when we chatted we chatted Jacob Duffy last time. So kind of interesting to see if the same names pop up in in all these kind of questions. But 
let's sort of start with the bowlers. Who's who's the bowler that kind of gives you the the biggest send offs in the nets? Um, I would say Michael Ray. <laughs> <laughs> he was a very popular name yeah. last time in this. Did um does he give you the full experience? Of, like, does he wear the headband at training, or is that just the games thing? No, I think it's a game thing. I think the new one is the early November going around. Um, ah, yeah, good. He loved the new November quite early in the season, and um, which is a good thing. He looks a bit <laughs> grumpy as well. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he's always a nice face up in the nets. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, are, are there any bowlers that kind of just bowl nothing but bounces when you're training indoors or on artificials? Yeah, um, we got a new signing, Andrew Hazeldean. Um, yeah, he's the popular one just around that. Um, <laughs> loves the short little nuts against your head. Um, <laughs> which we don't mind just to get us toughen up um, before the first game. So, um, no, yeah, no, it's good. He loves the short, the short ball in the net. <laughs> <laughs> And um and you know talking about net bowling, are there any batters that just think they're fantastic net bowlers that kind of never get to show their worth in a game? Um, no, not really with us, but maybe a bit of like Hamish Rutherford. Um, oh uh, yeah, just getting yeah, he's sort of that guy. Just he will bowl like three or four balls in the net, and then he will get somehow weaker than he will, he will let you know as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think the last couple of weeks he hasn't done that. I think he's a bit um, too shy now. Sort of the wickets are getting too flatter now. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, now you see, so, uh, I think everyone is quite competitive in the net. So, I think if someone getting a ball in their hand and they try to get a wicket just with one or two balls, um, they will find a way to get to get you out. Yeah, nice, nice. And um, who's who's sort of the most innovative batter during training? The one that just kind of plays every shot in the handbook, and and all the ones that aren't even in the handbook. Uh, we got a we, the new signing, Luke Johnson. Um, yeah, he's oh, yeah. a guy who's a freak talent. He's just hitting the ball any, everywhere he wants to. Um, but at the same time, we got a youngster, Jacob, coming as well, who's so good at free ball cricket. Um, good hand and eye coordination. Um, and then we've got Hamish Rutherford as well, who's just like a natural freak. Um, where the boys are struggling, he will hit the ball through the covers easily. So um, yeah, I think those three three boys are on their day. They can be quite tough to bowl to. Yeah, those two youngsters look like real, real talents. Yeah, who's um, who's kind of led the way in all your your preseason fitness drills, and and I guess secondary to that, is there anyone who seems to prefer looking in the mirror at the weight room to bowling and batting in the nets? Um, so the, always the the fitness we go, oh, fitness trainer Megan Gibson. Um, she's probably the, the character of all of us. Um, yeah, she's sort of just taking all the lead, and I think all the boys are just leaving her to to it. Um, she's quite tough <laughs> on that, so. But she's yeah, she's good fun. Um, she's like doing all these training days for us to, just to make us toughen up a bit, and then always having a have a, a like a what do you call it, the dress up code for the gym days as well, which is quite fun and getting the boys energized from gym sessions, especially on the late, on the long days. You train from ten to four, and then you got a gym session, and then the boys are like, nah, we don't want to do it. But then she will <laughs> some sort of get away to get you into the gym, and then everyone is quite happy about it. So. Um, yeah, I think she's the, probably the one who's doing all that of that for us, and yeah, she's quite good. Any uh, any odd superstitions in the in the changing room? Ooh, um, I'm not quite sure. I don't think there's anyone. Um, I'm a little bit, to be honest. I'm a little bit of oh, yeah? superstition. Yeah, I got some stuff I'm doing with. with I'm not always like. I'm a kid guy. I'm just someone in my head. I need to do this and this the last time I did the well. So, um, yeah, but not really with kid. Just some stuff off the field I need to do. Maybe go and play mini golf or something like that just to get get it going. So um, I'm probably not sure about the other boys, but I know I am a little bit, yeah. Not, uh, not, no, not uh, taping your bat to the roof, or no, no, no duck before no, no. Uh, the night before. No, 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 no not that type. <laughs> <laughs> And um, which provincial other provincial team do uh, does Otago enjoy beating the most? We had a, had a very common answer to this question last time when we whipped around all the squads. So, what's the question again? Which which other provincial team do you guys enjoy beating the most? Oh, um, some some team's gonna gonna get me. Um, I think for obviously <laughs> us as Otago votes, we like the South uh, the South Derby. So obviously the Cantabs, uh, the Canterbury. Um, yeah, they're probably the, the, the biggest one. And then I think the new one is the Central Stacks, just because Rob Volta, mm-hmm. all coaches there now. So I think that's probably the biggest yeah. one. Um, but yeah, I think those are two, the two biggest ones for me personally as well. 
You don't, you don't have to feel bad about that. Canterbury was the answer that came up pretty right. much with every other team <laughs> last year. That's good. <laughs> I played a lot of cricket in Canterbury, so I, I was a bit offended by that, but that's uh, that's all right. Good. Um, and uh, last couple here, your, your favourite ground in New Zealand? Oh, um, I love Uni Oval, to be honest. I'm a big fan of the Uni Oval. And then I haven't played at the Bay Oval yet, but um, mm. I would say it's Uni Oval or Hagley Oval. And uh, well, at least at least you've thrown the Hag- Hagley Oval uh, comment in there for the Cantabs. Yeah. So that's good. And and uh, best sledge you've heard at the domestic level? Oh, I've got a couple. Um, we've played a, 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 the game the other day, and then I was running to Rippy, and Rippy sort of tipped the ball to me, and I dropped it, and I and I, and I said to Rippy, "What have you done in two years? In um, in, in, oh, two months in India, you haven't trained spin." And he's like, "What have you done in two years? You haven't." He didn't catch any balls there. I was like, oh, yeah, that's a good, that's a good stretch. Um, <laughs> yeah. But to be honest, I, I can't remember much. Um, I haven't played like mm-hmm. obviously the last two years, so I can't remember much. But um, yeah, Rupi was on top of this point there. So yeah, back in my nice. seat, yeah. And uh, and look, before we let you go, let's finish with a couple more serious questions. Have, have, have the squad kind of set any goals for the season that you can kind of share with us? Yeah, I think for us and... and um, in 4 day cricket, we haven't won a trophy in, in I think it was 34 years. So um, I think mm. for us in the preseason, um, that's probably our main focus. Is we obviously want to win trophies, and but also at the same time we want to look at our history and see um, what's the long the, the period time of winning the trophies. And obviously the Plunkett Shield is 34 years ago. So for us, it's just start well in the, in the Plunkett Shield, um, getting the first win or two wins on our belt in the first couple of games and. And see the turn from there on for this from the um for, for the season. So I think mm. um for us is just make sure we, we dominate with the red ball and then take the same momentum into the white ball. I think that will just follow up. I think from our squad we are we got a good red ball squad and a white ball squad. So I think if we done well and play well as a team, um that shouldn't be a problem. And how about on a personal level? Are you someone who sets goals? Do you have kind of runs, wickets, targets in mind, or you know specific things you're trying to achieve? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm, I think every athlete just probably have their own goals in in, in some way. Um, for me, obviously, it's just to keep my record um, quite high with the with the white ball and perform well, and then um, obviously win trophies for for Tiger Woods in that white ball um, department. But at the same time. I want to dominate, um, start dominating red ball cricket and, and um, mm. putting on some good performances for, for the Tiger Bulls and the team. And they obviously score a bit of hundreds and taking more wickets. And then, um, yeah, we just win some games. And I think that's probably what we need this season is to win some proper games and getting that fight back and that um, eager back from our team just to start getting into the into the mixture of, of winning habits again. So, um yeah, I think just from a personal point of view, I obviously just want to score runs and win the games in red ball cricket. Nice. And, and look, I mean, that's that's probably a, a nice place to to leave it there. It's It's been really nice chatting to you, Dean, and, and getting a little taste of the, the Otago squad. Like, um, like I said in the opener, it's great to have you back in New Zealand and, and um, really wish you and the squad kind of all the best for the upcoming season. So, yeah, all the best, eh? Yes, mate. Thank you. And uh, for listeners of the show, sort of look out for, for plenty more episodes coming up over the next few weeks and months. We've got players and coaches from sort of all around the New Zealand domestic circuit aiming to touch base with all six provinces. We'll also be chatting regularly about the T20 World Cup, plus you'll see more of our Hall of Fame series. We're d- kind of down to the business end now as we count down the 100 best men's test cricketers of all time, according to Baldi's algorithm. So you'll find notes about how to contact us in the episode show notes. And we really do appreciate everyone who takes the time to give us a like, share, subscribe on all the social media and podcast channels. So, um, yeah, it's lovely to hear from you guys. And um, thanks for listening. And we'll see you again soon.